Yeah, but that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the point is, he's trusting me, isn't he? Yeah. To put him there. Yeah. Well, go on. Comprehend it, yeah. But it don't even... Thanks, Phil. Yeah, I've heard of that. No, I've heard of that. Hampton. But, uh, what? Go on, bud, get up. Go on, son, come over. You're a good boy. Good. Come on, baby. Be a good boy. Come on. Good boy. Thought we have a little walk now down here. Look, nice and steady. Hello, that. Right. Come on. No fear of the thing itself, has it? No, it's various things on the side, isn't it? That's not a worry, When it comes up there and he hears it, you've got a motorbike or something, he's been, you know. Might as well, just like the old little you get these two strokes. Yeah, sort of thing, yeah, yeah. Oh, Come over, come over. Go on. Go on. Go on. That's what he don't like, poor little son. Come oh, on, good up. What's behind, don't Big lorry. I don't like them. Them sort of drain holes. Yeah. Oh, is that funny, isn't it? Well, it just ain't new and it's ain't different. Well, I don't like anything they ain't seen before, really. I suppose. I want it to walk straight over this manhole here because it's, it's a lovely one, yeah. That's what you need, so. I know that one makes that hollow sound underneath, you know. So, a terrible. Um, oh, he ain't naked, have you? You've just seen him. He's 29 quid. He's 50 quid up, are we? 
Oh, that's where I'll go, that goes. It's a good garage. See, they are good garage, actually. I like that car. Lend you a car. I suppose they all do now, don't they? But they still lend you a little car, which is great. Come on, baby. What's this lorry say on that lorry there? This one coming out. What's it say on it? What's the name of it? What do they do? main road in to Andover. Well, there's Andover's there, down there. But this is the main road in, you know, feeding Andover right. off the 303. Um, I'll, I'll send them a few customers over the year. Well, I don't. Bill does. Yeah. They said everyone said little room in the garden, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. why you're, you're in a little room in the garden. No, it's the end of the. It's three cottages being knocked into one. Oh, where's this? This is your yo uh, yew tree uh, cottage opposite the uh, pub. There. They've got a lo lovely garden out the back with seats. Obviously, what pub? What's the pub called? Um, um, is it the Cricketers? Yeah. yeah. In Long Parish? Yeah. Just next to the shop, isn't it? That's right, yeah. But it, there's a little, um, there's a little place in the, in the garden. Oh, they've got like a little summer house there. Ah, oh, they've got like a, 
I've got a, a thing in the garden, like a converted garage or shed or something. Yeah? Or building. I don't know. I yeah, when you look down the side, you see it. That's where loads of people stay. Well, you're actually staying in the house. Yeah. The end of the, converted, um, the end of the house. Uh, a single upstairs and um, double room downstairs. And there is something in the garden. Have a look when you go back, I'm sure it yeah. is. She's a nice lady, isn't she? She's a lovely couple, yes. What did they have to say then about... Well, they like you two. Oh. <laughs> well, they would do, wouldn't they? Yeah, fucking send a fucking cast of you. How much it cost tonight then? That ain't bad, you know. It's pretty good, isn't it? Well, well we, it's that in Premier Inn. Yeah. Because they say it's £29, pounds. you never get much for £29. Pounds. Time you had your breakfast on, which is a tenner. Yeah. Right, so it's, you know. How much you prefer something like that? It's very comfortable little bed, but I didn't sleep. I got about two hours to lay there. What can't you sleep in? Just a pain? I think it's just it's somewhere... Oh, oh, no, I also thought you meant your knee like, yeah. Oh, no. Oh. It's, a, it's just some, something here. I haven't been away for years. Well, last time I was away from home for years ago, that was in the bloody hospital. Mm. Go on, we'll cut. Oh, good boy. Right. Yeah, now, we're going to get some... I keep forgetting this is on. I'll get a bollocking. Come on, mate. Please go for it. Come on. It's not like what I'm trying to say. It ain't like he lacks energy, is it? You know, if he's startled, he's got plenty of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, all the horses have. Right, quiet now. Let's get this film. No more talking until we. I'll like let to give a commentary on what I'm doing. Right, so we're coming up now. This is the main road in, uh, into Andover. We're going out of Andover now. And then we're going to come back and come into Andover. But um, we've got this roundabout, and then just the other side of that, you can go east or west. Come on, darling, there we go. East or west, so you go down to West Country and go east towards London, M3. No, you keep saying, yeah, I'm doing this on here. All oh, right, sorry. Okay, so. When we get the other side of this roundabout, as I say, they've got some... The road, there's a slip road goes off, which goes east. And the other road goes directly under the 303, which is where we'll be going. The good thing about doing this um, in training is the fact that you'll get vehicles coming up this inside, which is no bad thing, it's a very good thing. We've got a strimmer on the other side of the road working, come on. Come on, get up. And that's exactly what we want. Go on, get up. He's got no concern about every traffic going by him at all. All on. And we hope to get some heavy traffic coming up his inside um, and up his outside, which will be lovely. Come on, walk on, baby. Good boy. That's it. <laughs> Come on. 
That's it. There's a good boy. Come on. There's a good baby. No, this way. Come up here. That's it. There's a good leg. Come on. That's a good boy. Come on. Come on, babe. Get up. There's your good baby. Wave anything up the inside you can. There's a good boy. Yes you are. Yes you are. Get up there, boy. Get up there, boy. Get up, darling, come on. Are we coming up underneath the uh, 303 now? This big old bridge. <laughs> Go on. Come on, baby, up you go. Which is lovely. For them. If they do this, they go anywhere really. Big echo underneath here. Oh, the one, right. This is the one here that, um, come on. The one that tests them, you know, once they go and it's the echo and everything. Come over, darling. Come over. Pick it up there, babe. Good boy. So it's very quiet now, but echoey, obviously, you can hear the echo. When I'm talking, you can hear it echo, you know, quite that but so. We bring him over here. Tell him, oh, stand. And what he's got to do is stand quiet. All I want really is one truck to go by. We can get one big truck or you know something to go by but even cars make a lot of noise underneath here but if we can get one truck to go then that's good sounds like we got one here now walk on get up Come over. We want him over this side now, that's it. And we turn round at the top and go down the other side. So if also do this comfortably, that's the point. He's only got a piece of rubber in his mouth as I drive all my horses. And the only reason I do that is one I think is kinder anyway, but there is no pain being inflicted and obviously they've got to be listening to me and doing what I'm asking them to do because you've got no cantilever, you haven't got a curb chain, a metal bit on the bars of their mouth and a curb chain behind their chin um, so obviously the horses must be doing what I want them to do on, as requested, you know 
And a lot of people say to me, I'd never take my horse. Well, that's lovely. You don't have to take your horse in that situation. But the point of what I'm saying is, if you are on a country lane and you've got, you know, someone's building a house or a couple of houses being built in the village, you'll have concrete mixes coming down there, you know, you'll have all the building materials arriving. That's, let alone the local farmer with his tractors, trailers, and then you've got the, the man taking away the rubbish, you know, the dust cart taking away the rubbish, the dustman. It's another big lorry just come up his inside there, lovely. Two of them. Come on, walk up. So, that's my point. If they'll deal with this, then they're hardly going to be worried about something coming up the country lane. Good boy. Come over, darling. Now, you want to be looking behind, Dave, because we haven't got a light on this one. We should have put one on and a battery this morning. It's interchangeable from each carriage. I just like it on there. It's not a legal requirement, but you, know, you want to be looking behind and pushing them over that way. Because we are hidden to a certain extent by this hedge here as we go around this bend, just entering this under the bridge. Yeah? Okay. That's right. Well, just get your, get your glove out there and make sure they're over. That's quite an achievement for us to do that, but he's doing it with he's happy doing it, and that's the main thing really. But he's happy just clip clopping along there doing the job. Well, now we got the traffic coming down this side joining us, um, and we'll stay out in this lane. So if anyone wants to go up the inside of him, we won't restrict that. We certainly won't pull over into the slip road. Because that's not what you do in a motor car, so why would we do it with a awesome vehicle? There's no point. Oh, there's one there, lovely. Two, come on. Oh my lad, get on, good boy. So the point is when people say to me they come and have a horse broken and they say, oh, I'll never take it up there. In my experience, one day you're going to hit a diversion. There'll be an accident. Yeah. There'll be, one day there'll be a diversion, there'll be an accident, walk the main broke, something like that. Now, what are you going to do? Please don't say to me you're going to take the horse out of harness and walk it home or anything like that because you might have a queue of traffic behind you. You might be in somewhere where it's impossible to get the horse out of harness. So you're going to have to cope with it. And these horses that I break, that's why we have a big waiting list because they're safe in traffic. They're safe every which way they're done. Now maybe, I suppose because I'm getting on in years, come on, walk up. They broke the old fashioned way, but that's how they want to be. And people say to me, oh yes, but you know, the, you know, the traffic these days is terrible and you know, there's so much of it. And it's a hundred years ago. Come on, darling, that's it. I believe I'm, you know, right in saying your first motor cars were around, certainly. You know, like there's quite a few motor cars around then. What must that have been like? They saw one very occasionally. They had very little control over them vehicles. 
so you know and I mean obviously you could steer them and do all that sort of thing but what I mean is the early ones around 1900 and that would be rattly, whistly, noisy very very noisy machines so how did they cope? and then you had the traction engines you had the steam lorries working all this stuff I mean steam rollers going to work they weren't transported on lorries they went up the public highway to go and mend roads they actually drove them there they didn't put them on low loaders like they do today so you had that tremendous crunching noise going along on a hard surface you know when they would come up and then you had all the come on like Pigford's, the old removals firm. I mean, they had shire horses to start with, and then as time went on, they had traction engines, and they'd pull two or three containers behind them, two or three trailers. And all sorts of that stuff going on. So that was a much, in my opinion, a much more frightening time for horses. There's not a horse I shouldn't think there's barely horse in this country that's never seen traffic, you know, at some time in its life. So, it's not like you're taking one off of a, I don't know which one it is, Jersey or Sark, they don't have any, you know, motorised vehicles, and then you know, horse come over then, he wouldn't be surprised, <laughs> wouldn't he? Um, and wonder what they were, but they'll cope with anything as long as you give them time to understand what you want yeah and the confidence to do the job and when you drive horse in these conditions you've got to be confident that's what gives the horse confidence that's why i never push them any faster than they can go that's why you cannot write books on breaking horses because every horse is different and how i start one off i wouldn't start another and if you try and say well yeah a certain amount of horses we've done this way yes of course but then when you get let's say there's a hundred horses a 25 of them you can put in that category and then you've got and then you've got another 25 in that 25 in that 25 in that category then you find then you find that you've got to subdivide them categories again because they're just not the same. If they was the same, you could produce them on a conveyor belt. And that's the problem. And horses are not broken properly now. But, you know, you take it to somebody and they say, oh yes, well there you are, it's going round an arena, it's going up a country lane. That's no good. Because the day you get a problem, the horse can't deal with it. The next thing I hear all the time is horses experience. Well, let me say this, there's plenty of horses that have been driving years, 10 year old, wouldn't do what my young horses do, or face the traffic. I mean, most horses we have, we never take horse less than it has had its third birthday, we don't take horses. We do take younger horses, but that's not for this sort of training, that's just for handling, picking their feet up, grooming, washing, loading, that type of thing, yeah? I'll be getting used to all that. So, we, that's the only time we take horses under three. It's, it's more groundwork. Horses that are a little bit, getting a bit full of themselves and just need, you know, having some boundaries set. So that's the only time we take horses, that are horses, ponies, whatever. Come on, darling, pick your head up. Um, come on, he'd like to go down and eat some grass on the side of this road here. Come on, he's a good lad. Um, so as I say, we take them then. Well, if you look at the films on there, I'd say 80% or more are all she's at their third birthday. So they're between, you know, they're actually three years old heading towards four. So three and four year old. Well, the all she's are perfectly well behaved doing the job and coping nicely 
the majority of 10 year old horses, 10, 12, 14, whatever age you want to say, or anything, anything past four year old then, wouldn't do this. They wouldn't be able to cope with it. Well, this horse here is an older horse. Well, he's older, he's five year old. Yeah, and he's just being broke now. I think he's five or coming five. Yeah, he's coming five, I think. Um, can't remember now, but I'll have a look in his mouth when we get back. The, um, he's coming five, so he's coping it the same as any other horse. I've done horses that have never driven, have been ridden, and they're 14, 15, 16, even 17. I've done one. Steady. There's a good boy. Just walk. Just walk. Come over. There's a good boy. Come over there. So, See, he's only got a piece of rubber in his mouth and you never see me pull on the reins. They're laid up on his, you know, there's not a great deal of pressure. I hear all the time in the driving world, you know, you need a firm contact with your horse at all times. Well, tell me how this works then. Tell me how this works. How can I do this with all these horses with a soft rubber bit in their mouth and not much contact? So, that's my point. I suppose that's why we have a waiting list for horses to come to be broke. You know, or broke, whatever you want to call it, broke, trained, you know. And as I say, all he's got is a soft piece of rubber. And there's no great contact with his mouth, enough I can just feel his mouth. That's all I'm doing is just feeling it so I can steer him where I want him to be. I'm going to come over into another lane in a minute. Um, that's all right. <laughs> come over. Go on. Get up. There's a good boy. Yes, you are. Go on. That's it. Come down here. <laughs> and the bond that it makes between the driver and horse will last a lifetime when people come down and they drive their horse out with me so they can see what they've done. I mean, obviously, there's films all the time as we're filming now. But, um, to show what they've done. And then they come out with me as long as they keep the horse with the same amount of, well, I suppose it's um, keep it in the same zone, you know, keep the same level of discipline up that it does as it's told when you ask it to do it. That's why I never asked horse to do something you can't do because, or he's not ready to do because that's just ridiculous. You know, you'll, you'll take all of these, everything away from him by doing that. You know, if you'll frighten him. So it, it needs to be that... Come on. Come on. Good boy. Walk up. Don't bother waving nothing else on. I don't want to mention that to you again. Let them get their fucking cells passed. So one day you'll do that, you'll wave them on, something to come round here and it'll be your fault. Especially if you've got a webcam on that dashboard. You're fucked. Get up. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Get up. Come 
Come on, baby. Get up. Good boy. Yes, you are a good boy. Yes, you are a good boy. You go up there. Go on. Go on. There's a good boy. Standing up on the back of here, does that make your knees go? Or not really bothering? Oh, I thought your vibration coming up with him. I know when I done my leg, cool climbing that did hurt. Go on my baby, up you go, there's a good boy. Come on. Go on. Get up. Come over. My little car's cheap, isn't it? Nice, looks clean, nice little car. Mm. Little mini. Come on.